All right, uh, this is probably the first fly you've tied with a bead head on it. Uh, the important thing with the bead, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's a, a part that's countersunk that's got a bigger hole in it and a side that has a smaller hole. The smaller hole goes towards the eye of the hook. So you want to put the hook through the small hole. And these are some spiffy little tweezers that I spent way too much money on. But you can do it, just run that hook right through that bead. So that bead runs right up behind the eye and the small hole is in front and the big hole is in back. I'll show you that, yep. Um, another way to do that is to put your hook in the vise, like this. And then you can take your bead between your fingers and slide it on there. Once it's on there, then you can turn your, your fly or your hook the way you want it. <clears throat> so it's, yeah, it's just, the big thing with the bead is making sure one of them is picking the right size. There's a lot of little charts out there that tell you what size you need for the hook size. Um, you can go a little bigger, a little smaller if you want to. They make them in silver, gold, black, copper, and a, a rainbow of colors now, so. Um, but anyway, you, you've got the small hole forward and it's kind of countersunk in back and then you're going to take your thread and do your, your uh, jam knot right behind that. <clears throat> and another trick, if you take your, the tag end of your thread and hold it up and you wrap that thread, it'll go right side by side as you wrap that tag down. So it'll make a nice, neat way to cover that hook. And then once you get back here to the end, trim your tag off. And part of the, the process of making your flies is making them nice and neat and tapered the right way because all your bugs pretty much taper from back to front. So I'm going to move my thread back up to just behind that bead. Actually just a little short of that. So I've got that just about a bead length from the eye of the hook. And I'm going to take my stretch tubing. See, I left all my stretch tubing together. That way I use exactly what I need and I trim off the excess and I don't end up with that extra half inch or an inch or whatever. So with that behind there, everybody always tries to tie in this little bitty end. I'm going to take that and tie it in right there. I got one wrap over it. I'm going to give it another wrap. And they're, they're fairly loose wraps. See, that still moves around on there. And then I'm going to start pulling it back to where it gets, to where it gets where I want it to be. I want it to be right behind that bead. And now I'm going to wrap that down tight, right up behind that bead. So now I've got a nice neat knot right there that holds all that down. I, don't, I didn't trim anything off. I didn't lose any material. And I've got a nice neat tie right there. And the stretch tubing, like I said, it stretches really good. I'm going to pull that tight across the back because I want that to taper towards the front. And I'm just going to wrap that right side by side as I go down. And right around the bend of that hook. That's so nice and tapered. Uh, one of the things too with this thread, as you wrap, you're going clockwise. To clockwise, yeah. Um, it tends to wrap that thread round. It's, it keeps twisting it kind of like a spinning reel. And you can see that thread, how, tight, how round it is. If I take that thread and spin it backwards, I don't know if you can't see that on the camera, but I spin it backwards, that thread gets flat again. See, that's nice and flat. And now I can build my underbody because I want to make this just a little bit thicker as I go up. And again, right behind that bead, And as I wrap that, I'm going to untwist it again. As you can see how it's twisted there. If I wrap it the other way, it gets really round. I go this way, it gets really flat. And I'll show you how, I'll tell you the difference here in just a minute with whether it's round or flat for some things. So I'm using that thread to build up a, 
nice, even, smooth underbody. All righty. Now I'm right up behind the bead and I'm just going to let it hang there. I'm going to take my, my stretch tubing. And since it's, <clears throat> since you're new to this, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off because otherwise you're going to have a lot of trouble getting that, that stretch tubing under control. So I would cut off about three inches of that. But I'm going to take this. I'm going to start my first wrap right there so it covers that gray. And you can determine how fat or how thick you want this just by how tight you pull that stretch tubing because I can pull that really tight and make that really flat or I can loosen it up and give it more round segmentation. So I'm gonna give it just a, keep it just a little bit looser as I wrap that. So that I've got good segmentation. When this gets wet, the water um, will actually make this, the sun going through will make that actually glow just a little bit and you'll have a clear tubing over a gray so it's a 3D effect. Once I get right behind that bead, I want one last wrap. And I'm gonna take my thread and spin it counterclockwise, which makes it round, which gives a little more strength. And I'll go right behind that material and give it one wrap, two wraps, and three wraps. I've got three wraps on top of it, and I'm gonna pull it back and give it two wraps in front. One of the things I learned a long time ago was uh, if you count your thread wraps, you don't end up with 40 wraps on, and you don't end up with one. Uh, because if you count your thread wraps, you're more conscious, you make nice, neat, small flies. Uh, this size fly, and like the woolly buggers and stuff, it's not that important. But when you start tying dry flies and, and smaller flies, uh, it, really, it really becomes important. So with the stretch tubing, I'm gonna pull that up, give it a good stretch up. I'll snip it right behind that bead. So how many wraps did I put on behind it? I got three behind it and two in front. So now I'm gonna give it a couple, three more wraps, just because that stretch tube does tend to be a little slick. And I'm gonna use my half hitch tool, but you, or uh, my whip finisher, but you can do a half hitch too. I can do that with my fingers. One, two, and then I'll trim my thread off. And that's the, what do we call that, stretch tube skill. Um, a lot of times I'll tie little midges, like really small midges with the same stretch tube. Uh, so this is one of those things that if you can tie this body, that's the body that's on this fly here. That's stretch tube on this body. So, <clears throat> again, remember your jam knot goes right behind that bead. And you're going to cover that hook. <clears throat> 